Hey everybody, this is Mark Germany with Fireside Winery and Ackerman Winery, and as you can see, I can't. So today we are going to be doing a little blind tasting of all of our club releases for the April wine clubs. And we're going to tell you a little bit about each wine and see if I can identify them without seeing what they are or knowing what they are. Have fun. First up. It's so fun drinking wine early in the morning. <laughs> All right, where, where am I? All right, you're on the left. There we go. Give it a nice little swirl, a little smell. Now I can tell you exactly what that is just by smell. Uh, that is our that is our 2022 vintage of La Crescent. Yep, definitely La Crescent. Great job, Mark. Nice. So um, this wine, um, it's a little bit lesser known wine for us here at Fireside Winery. 100% um, La Crescent from our Brickyard Hill Vineyard. We don't grow a whole, whole lot of La Crescent, but we do have some new vineyard um, that has La Crescent in it, so we're able to have a little bit more production of it. In the past, this um, wine has always been blended into Brickyard Hill White, maybe some other various whites, but the 2023 vintage, we had a really good crop of La Crescent. Um, it was really, really high quality fruit, and Zach and I made the decision that we wanted to do a single variety um, and release it completely dry. It's very, very bright, has some notes of Meyer lemon on the nose, lemon zest, um, some really good floral characteristics, um, and a really, really nice acid balance that is very similar to something like a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so for you Sauvignon Blanc drinkers out there, this is the wine for you. All right, next up. Bubbles. Bubbles. This is exciting. Try to find the glass. <laughs> no, it's so far on your left. Okay. So it's bubbles, so I don't want to swirl it. Oh, I think I know what this one is. It's not Blanc de Brickyard. This has a really, really strawberry nose. So I'm gonna say this is Noir de Brickyard, maybe Fizzy Firefly. Oh, it's dry, so definitely Noir de Brickyard. Correct. Awesome. Uh, guys, this is, um, from a winemaking standpoint, this is one of my favorite wines. This is made from Marquette, from our Brickyard Hill Vineyard. Um, it's about 90% Marquette Rosé, and then we've blended in a little bit of La Crosse, La Crescent, St. Pepin, and maybe even a little Brianna, if I remember correctly, to kind of brighten it up and lighten up the color just a little bit. Um, Noir in French means black. Um, so if you think of Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir is called Pinot Noir because the skins look black, even though they're technically a dark purple. With Marquette, Marquette has that same similar idea. So um, we have Blanc de Brickyard, which is our white, and Noir, which is our rosé or red, uh, referring to the type of grape that is used for it. Um, you're going to get notes of strawberry, um, real rich biscuit, bread, yeasty type characteristics on this. Uh, drinks very similar to like a vintage rosé champagne. Um, unfortunately, this is a wine that tends to be a little overlooked in our portfolio by our customer, um, but it's one of those things where if you just try it, you're going to fall in love with it. Um, usually when I come to the tasting room, if I'm working or if I'm just hanging out, um, I myself and one of our owners, Rana, we tend to like to pour ourselves a glass of this. Enjoy. And third wine for Dry Club. We're gonna have Mark try and pour it himself. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, you are, this is gonna be dangerous. <laughs> Which is the empty glass? You're right. This one? Yep. <laughs> oh, it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> is there enough in there for There's me to enough, taste? yeah. Okay. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so this is definitely a dry red. Mm, I'm getting notes of like brownie batter, um, a little bit of mocha. I'm also getting some like plum.
I can tell by the acid, this has to be front and back. Good job. Nice. <laughs> so front and back, we, um, we grow quite a bit of front and back on our Brickyard Hill Vineyard. And front and back is known for having really, really high acid levels. Um, so it can be in the winery from a winemaking standpoint, a difficult wine to work with. It has high titratable acidity levels. So there's pH in winemaking, but there's also TA. TA is the actual measure of how much acid, the specific acid, um, is in that wine. Um, Frontenac tends to be really high in both malic acid and tartaric acid. We do put this through a secondary fermentation that uh, metabolizes some of that malic acid and turns it into lactic acid, so it softens it out a little bit. But Frontenac will always be a higher acid red wine. Um, so, with that say, being said, um, it tends to get overlooked by our customers because it can come off as a little less approachable. Um, but if you really, really dive into a good Frontenac, like this 2020 vintage, I believe this is, yes, um, it's a really, really expressive wine. Um, like I said, I mentioned all of those kind of sweet characteristics, the mocha, the brownie batter type characters, but it's all got this kind of acidic plum uh, finish. So it's a really, really enjoyable wine. I think it's a wine that really needs food. I would pair this with a ribeye steak specifically or a fattier cut of meat. With having that acid, you want to have some fat in there um, to make that acid kind of balance out. This could also pair with sweeter offerings as well. So um, you could drink a dry wine with your dessert, like a chocolate cake or something like that, and that acid is going to really balance everything out. Enjoy.